Hey fellas, it's been a couple weeks since my last video. I've been working on this. It's uh, A1E and it combines the Zuki Mora kit along with a Fisher model and something convert resin conversion kit to make it the fat face. And uh, I'm pleasantly surprised at how it turned out. I wasn't sure. It was a little bit of a pain, but uh, you know, I got it done. It's not perfect, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. The uh, This is the last uh, commission build that I'm doing for the year, and probably sometime in the next year. And I'm pretty excited, because now I'm going to get to do some stuff that uh, that I want to do, and it's been a while since I've been able to do that. So I've got a bunch of kits lined up. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to start out doing, but uh, I've got a new toy. Well, my wife got a toy and I get to use it. And and I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, but it's called a Cricut. C-R-I-C-U-T. It's um, used to cut like vinyl and cardstock and, and you can cut all kinds of things with it. And I've been using it. It's typically used to like make shirts, like vinyl, cut out vinyl for shirts. And I've been making some Prime Model Works shirts. And I'll probably send some of these out to a couple of my consistent customers. Um, but when my wife mentioned it a few weeks ago, you know, I, you know, I didn't care. And then I started looking into it and I thought, well, maybe I can use that to make masks for models. <clears throat> and I ended up with this particular plane that the customer sent me. He sent me these uh, decals for this stripe that goes along the the uh, fuselage here. If anybody's ever tried to put these wide decals on a on a surface like this that's irregular, it's just a pain in the butt. So what I did is I used the Cricut and I made uh, a mask. I'm flipping you off, sorry. Uh, I made a mask similar to this and uh, painted it instead and it worked out a ton better. So I know it works. I've used it for a few uh, few different masks just to experiment, but uh, I'm going to show you how I do it, and so you can see if it's something you want in your arsenal. Uh, I looked on I looked online, and I think it's like anywhere from 200 to 250 bucks. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a, a mask of this U.S. Air Force uh, decal and one of the stars and bars just to show you how it works and I'm going to use Frisket if you've never used Frisket it's like a real thin clear it's not really tape but it does have some stickiness to it it's like artist Frisket it's pretty inexpensive and I like to use it because it's it's almost it's it's I, it's kind of hard to explain. It's almost like tape, but it's not. Um, it peels off pretty easily, and it won't peel your paint off. Um, so I like using this for masks, but I also got some, like to me, a masking, uh, whatever they call this. I don't know. Um, it's a masking sticker sheet by Tamiya. So we'll we'll do. Uh, I'll do. Uh, uh, make a couple masks with each one of these and show you how it works. So let's go to the Cricut office. All right, fellas. Here's the Cricut. It's a Cricut Explore Air 2. We'll go ahead and open this up. Turn it on. This thing's pretty cool. And as you can see, it's got a little blade in here. Let's see if we can see this. It's a little blade. And I've got the fine fine point blade in. It's got another little holder for like to put markers if you, you're making cards or whatever. And there's like a scoring tool you can put in there to like score your card stock. And I haven't really experimented with that too much. But, um... What we got is it comes with these different mats, and these are kind of these are tacky. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my frisket up here at the top. And it's got the measurements on there, and you'll you'll see what this is for in a few minutes. And then I'm going to put my Tamiya sticker stuff down here at the bottom. I'll get it on there real good. As you can see, this lifts up. It's just tacky. It just holds it on there for when it cuts. So I'm going to set this aside a minute. Um, what I'm going to do is measure out my US Air Force logo or lettering here and as you can see it is 5.3 centimeters so that's how big we're gonna make want to make the lettering let's see what the uh, stars and bars I'm gonna work with and that is gonna be 5.5 centimeters wide. So let's scoot in and zoom in closer to the computer screen. All right. Now this comes with its own little, it's called Cricut Design Space. And you can, you can uh, do a few things with this. But if I want like a complex image, what I'll do is I'll download an image from uh, like Google Images and I'll use my GIMP, um, my Photoshop program, and I'll manipulate it and then I'll upload it into this. So let's start off with the U.S. Air Force text. And we'll find the <coughs> font that I want to use. And I've already downloaded it from dafont.com. Uh, it is down here. U.S. Air Force Stencil. That's what I want. And it comes up. It's at 5.6. So we said 5.3, I think. So we'll go up here and change this to 5.3. And since I have the aspect ratio... Um, locked it will automatically adjust the height and it says it's 1.7 so let's look make sure that we're at 1.7 uh, looks good to me close enough all right so we're gonna go ahead and move this up here now I want to upload my stars and bars and I already have a, um, a stencil made for it, but I'll show you how this works. Get my stars and bars. And this is just an image that I got off Google and uh, I uh, adjusted the colors on uh, my Photoshop program. And if you have like a simple, I could have used simple image and, you know, once you play with this, you'll realize what all that does, but we can just use moderately complex. It's uh, kind of irrelevant with this particular image. So what happens is when I download the image, it's not going to cut it out just like this. What it's going to do is they show you a preview of what your cut's going to look like. And it's just one big blank page. So what you have to do is they give you this magic wand eraser tool up here and you just click on the parts that you want cut out so I want to cut out all this surrounding the stars and bars and there we go and there we go now let's zoom out we can click preview and this is going to show you what it's going to what exactly it's going to cut out so all the shaded areas is what it's going to cut out that's what we want. Come over here, hit continue. Now it gives you the option of print then cut image. So you could actually send this to your printer and print out whatever you have on here or you can just cut it. And we're just gonna use cut. And we're gonna label this stars, bars. Save. Okay, we're going to insert this image 
and we said this was 5.5 centimeters wide. We're going to put 5.5, enter, and it resizes it. Okay, now since I'm cutting on two different, uh, two different masks, I'm going to just duplicate each one. And let's duplicate this one. And then we're going to make it. All right, now when we put this stuff on the mat, it has the exact copy of the mat on the computer and it shows you where it's going to do the cuts. So we got our frisket up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these for the frisket and one of these for the Tamiya stuff. And let's see if we can zoom out. All right, so you can see the, uh, I've got this set on here, so it goes out a little over seven inches and down about five inches. And then this one goes out about the same. So I've got it lined up so it's, I know it's gonna cut in the area that I have the, the, the mask. So, what we're going to do is we're going to load this. Let me move my camera back so you can see. Get all this crap out of the way. We'll load this into the Cricut machine. And we'll hit continue. All right. Now what happens is when it's ready, there's a little arrow up here that blinks and you just hit it. It grabs onto it. You gotta make sure it grabs onto it because there've been times when I've put it in there and it didn't actually grab. And then now I'm ready to cut. So then what I'll do is I'll just hit the cut button and it's gonna start cutting my mask. And you can actually put this on fast mode as well, so it cuts a little bit faster. Um, I haven't found any um, difference in accuracy of the cuts, but I haven't really cut a whole lot of real fine detail with it. On fast mode, so it, it, it might make a difference when you get down to, to fine detail cuts. So we're just cutting it on regular mode. And it's, you know, if you're not cutting a super intricate mask, then uh, it, I don't think it's really going to make that much of a difference, to be honest with you. All right, it's done. Get it ejected. And let's see what we got here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with my exacto blade. And you can actually set this to where it will cut around it so you don't have to do this extra cut. And we're just gonna pull it off. And let's see here. I might've had this set a little too deep. 
And we're just going to peel this off and show you what we got with the Tamiya. Now, the last time I did this with the Tamiya tape, um, I didn't really have the fine blade in here. And it kind of curled up some of the edges. So let's see what we want for our mask. All right, let's see how close this came to the size. And it looks perfect. Check out the US Air Force. And as you can see, it is perfect. So that's how that works. Um, and then you can just use this. What I would do with the stars and bars, and this Tamiya tape, if I were gonna do the stars and bars, I don't think I would use the Tamiya tape, because as you can see, it, it just kinda, when you take it off, it just kinda like gets all bent up. So I would actually, probably use the frisket. So let's see how that works out. And as you can see, I, I kind I had it set too deep. I probably should have um, set it, because I've got it on like the, the uh, highest paper setting. I probably could have set it a little bit lower just so it cut the, uh, the masking film instead of the, the, um, the whole piece of paper, but I'll get to working with it. Yeah, let's pull this off. Yeah, it would have worked out much better if I set it on the lower, the lower setting. But the uh, the frisket. As you'll see here in a second, isn't doesn't bend as much as the Tamiya tape. So for something like this, this is what I would use. You can see that, but that's how it works. Um, just another tool in the arsenal, and uh, I'm gonna have fun with this. So I uh, I will probably do. I think I'll probably do a I don't know a couple of di different videos. Um, and then I'll probably on my next build, I may do like a full build on like an MA kit or something just, just for fun. So either way, I'll catch you next time.